visual. I see it all. This is IC Web 3. I'm your host, Visual. Today I have a few guests I'm very excited to get going with. Um, we got Nikki Lynette in the building. We have the Narwhals. We got Mickey G. We have Rock Lobster. And we also have Dr. Jane Baxter. And we're going to get into some talk about mental health, the effects of it in, um, in Web 3. Uh, you know, it's a pretty busy space. We all tend to run ourselves down a little bit and it gets a little tough but um we're gonna figure it out today with some great conversation and so that you guys know a little bit about myself i'm the host of icy web 3 and i am also a music artist spaces host podcast host youth advocate mental health and financial literacy advocate and i've been doing my you know groundwork for many years in the community here in Chicago and outside of that wherever I could get in real life and obviously something like Web3 has allowed me to expand on all those uh, endeavors that I have had over the years whether it be music or inspiring teaching things of that nature and um, I'm excited about the space in general I'm not too new to it but also not very seasoned in it as well been um, in the space for about six seven months and just kind of getting my feet wet a little bit, trying to, you know, starting out as a collector and eventually trying to put out some of my own projects as well. So I'm excited to talk to you guys. Um, you guys can go ahead, just introduce yourselves, whoever's in as a speaker, um, whoever wants to go first. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll start. So I, I, I hope everyone's having a great day. Uh, my name is Calvert here on the Narwhal account. Um, I'm a student currently at USC, graduating this spring. It, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing in, in one month coming up here, going to graduate. And um, yeah, I am one of the founders up here for the Narwhals. Um, you know, we're all about creating mental wellness benefits for our community. And um, yeah, I'm not going to touch too much on, on, on what we're doing just now, but um, yeah, I, I really love being able to work with my mom. Um, she's our mental health coach. And uh, my sister, she actually hand drew all of these narwhals herself. So it's been an amazing family and friend project. Um, you know, we're creating a really awesome support community for our holders in Web3. And um, one of our main selling points really is that we're providing a, a subscription box service where we'll be sending out self-care products for narwhal holders we're looking to do this every month and eventually um you know onboard these already established storefronts into web3 and and give them a platform to market their products to all of web3 not just our community just... but um that's just the short 60 second pitch but um i'm so excited to be up here and um talk about this topic it's such a, a dear one to my heart and uh, yeah I've been in the space for about seven or eight months now and yeah I mean the, the effect on mental health has has been a little straining so I'm definitely looking forward to diving into this topic and thank you visual and, and Nikki for hosting us we're, we're, we're really um, thankful for, for your platform and um, this opportunity to share a little bit about the blessing so um, that's just a little bit about us. We're the unicorns of the open sea. And um, yeah, just really happy to be here. Oh, dope. Okay, I'll go next. Name is Lynette. Um, I was talking about mental health online before it was cool. I've been mentally ill for that long. Um, I'm a social impact artist and a suicide survivor. And I um, and a, I'm, I'm an award-winning social impact artist. I did a musical about depression. Um, it's a theatrical piece. It's currently we're in production for a 19 show run of that. I licensed my music to TV and film. Um, I turned my musical into a film. We did nine film festivals now. We're in nine film festivals and we just got nominated for our fifth award. So that's exciting. And I have a docu-series that just got funded as well. So talking about mental health is my life. It's what I do. Because for me, you know, I'm managing mental wellness with just nootropics and talk therapy. I'm not currently on meds. So 
the mental health conversation is more than just like a talking point for me. I have to be in that conversation all the time because I have to be present to my wellness to stay well while living with a trauma disorder. So I love spaces like this because I feel like they're very considerate. Like they're very considerate of the fact that like there are different types of brains showing up in all these spaces from people who are just navigating sadness to people who are navigating anxiety to people who are navigating functional depression to people who are navigating suicidal ideation. And all of these conversations are really important to have for that reason, because everybody has mental health. Everybody has it. Even like if you don't have to have a mental illness like me to have mental health needs, just like everybody got physical health, everybody got mental health. And when we have these conversations online, it helps normalize that stuff so that it becomes less about shame or less about how we should be and more about how we actually are. And that's why I love like the whole Narwhals project because I just think it's a, I think it's so authentic. Like, I think it's just very real. And so like, of course, like people have wanted me to be involved in NFT stuff before, but like, I'm not so motivated by things I don't really get, like, I don't feel are about mental health or about things that make a difference. And this was the first one I really connected to. So glad to be a part of it. Nikki. <laughs> I will go next. Um, it is so nice to meet you. Um, you too. Gosh, I, I love your story. I love, love, love it. I love how out there you are with it. And um, so I am 57. I um, have been a psychotherapist for, gosh, I don't know, 25 plus years. Um, and um, when Cal got into this whole world I had no clue about it um, but I loved his you know why why he wanted to do it the creativity the ripple effect the message and um, that he also you know wanted a voice in the project and I I've been really just loving being a part of it and um, listening to so many younger people just being real <laughs> you know just working really hard and feeling the effects of working really hard and yeah, just struggling with the stress and the burnout and um, owning it and trying to figure it out you know like trying to do the work but also do the self-care and that's just a lifelong task really um so yeah, I, I've really loved my career and have felt honored, so honored um, in being a part of um, other people's journeys. Um, I was able to write a book called How to Manage Your Depression with Exercise. I really strongly believe in exercise and developed a program called PsychFit, um, which combines personal training and talk therapy. Um, Whoa, that's so dope. Yeah, so I started that in 2003 and 2004 in that time frame. And um, it got picked up um, by the Washington Post and then was picked up by every major newspaper in the country. It was just like this wild thing that uh, I wasn't expecting, you know, to take off. And um it just speaks to how much people want to be well in every in every way, you know, just physically, mentally, spiritually. It's it, it all has to kind of be working together, you know. And so, um, anyway, I feel like I'm rambling, so I'm, I'll just kind of stop for now. It's great to be here. Thanks for hosting the space, you guys. Mom, it's okay. You're completely fine, and you're such a professional in like the the way that uh you're speaking on the space it's just it's so awesome to see you coming into you know something that's not so familiar in twitter and and um really just helping us put ourselves out there it's just been so awesome to work with you so don't oh, don't awesome. worry okay <laughs> I, I, I love you <laughs> love you too i'll go next i'm mickey 
I'm good friends with Cal since high school. We used to play football together, and we've gone through some ups and downs together, but we've always had pretty similar visions that we wanted to start a business together since we've been in college. Um, Cal came to me with this idea and brought me onto the team. I had a big crypto background, but not really so much NFTs in particularly. So we did the research together and made the narwhals happen with Luca and Rock Lobsta over there. Um, and this journey has just brought us so far. It's really just changed my thought on the world and see, getting to see everyone's pers- perspectives firsthand. It's just really powerful to me. That's a little about me. Yeah, man, it's been great to, to work with you. And, you know, it was just so cool to see kind of our team bonding over NFTs. I know we kind of all got into Alien Friends pretty early. And um, just to see, you know, the positive side of the space and feel that energy has just been so great and powerful. And, you know, we, we just want to kind of give back and in, in, in that way and, and share this energy of positivity in the space because yes there there is a lot of positivity in the space but you know there's also a lot of negativity and um, you know some red flags and uncertainty just given the unregulated market here but um, yeah it's just been so great Jack do you want to share a few words and then we can kind of dive into this topic here yeah for sure um, so, hi everyone. My name is Jack, otherwise known as Rock Lobster. Um, I actually go to school uh, with Cal at USC, also about to graduate. Um, had a background in finance, um, but recently kind of, as they were saying, got into the world of um, crypto through a class that me and Cal had actually taken to get, um, not together, but uh, in successive semesters. Um, absolutely fell in love with the space, uh, got... Um, eventually started talking to him about nfts and i've been in it ever since um i've absolutely loved um being able to represent such um an amazing mission and especially when it's so relevant to yourself um working i I know this space is very demanding and um definitely experienced that and uh being in involved in this product has definitely inspired me to sort of um be more involved in my own mental health and my own um, recovery so i cannot be more thankful for that and the amazingly supportive community we have around us that's awesome that's awesome i love it i love it well guys it looks like we're obviously here on the same page we we all kind of relate to a lot of things that we're bringing up and um looks like we're all kind of on that same mission so i really I'm looking forward to what we come up with here in this conversation. And um, one thing that I kind of wanted to start it off with was, you know, I mentioned, um, I mean, I heard a couple of you mention, you know, um, from the doctor to, I believe it was either uh, Mickey or Cal that mentioned working out. And I think that's something that's pretty important. And relating to Web3, um, I think that's something that, you know, tends to maybe either be forgotten or overlooked because we tend to you know, whether we're collecting or working our own, on our own projects or developing businesses, whatever it may be that we're working in, in this space, it seems that we kind of tend to be stuck to it, right? Um, and even before Web3, because I mean, like I said, I'm pretty new myself to Web3, but um, even outside of Web3, I was, you know, whether it was music, whether it was a project I was working on, an event I was planning, I just tend to kind of work myself into the ground and not pay attention to the fact like, hey, you're not sleeping enough. Um, you're eating a bunch of junk, you're not working out, and those things take a toll on you. So I kind of just wanted to get started with those types of conversations, and um, I wanted to share, if you guys, um, you know, don't mind, I wanted to share an experience that I personally had, um, you know, this is probably about 10 years ago, I was I was really at a point where um, physically, I was just, I was just in a bad place, I, I, I was, you know, very overweight, unhealthy, and, and not doing very good, um, just was not taking care of myself in general. And I just, you know, kind of got to the point where 
you know, when people would tell me, hey, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're getting overweight, you're, you're this, you look like this, you look like that, and it didn't really affect me much. It, I didn't really think much of it. You know, it was like whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, what people were telling me. But what really hit me was when I started to feel like, like I just felt like junk. I felt, I felt really just horrible. Um, wasn't feeling good. Um, you know, I was tired. I was just you know not 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 in the right mindset of, of anything that i wanted to do for myself and i was just too focused on on working and, and you know paying paying my bills and saving money and investing and you know which is not not nothing wrong with that obviously but but i was not focused on my health which you know if i'm investing and saving money and had plans for this that and a third and i'm not taking care of my health it wouldn't have mattered right so then i decided to start you know really focusing on on eating better working out and um i actually became vegetarian and and it was an, an amazing experience for me um you know unfortunately i haven't been able to stick to it you know i was on it for about six years though uh vegetarian then i kind of just fell off the wagon um but i had a different focus um after having that experience i lost 60 pounds um you know i was feeling amazing i was working out five six times a week and and i was just really focused on it and and it really shifted me to a way of thinking that i realized you know um I did something kind of extreme to kind of flip everything around, but I also realized that I didn't have to be so extreme about it, but I did just have to be more mindful about the decisions I was making, you know, whether I was eating something that just wasn't healthy for me or eating too much of it, or whether I was not spending enough time, you know, working out or at least getting physical in some way. And, and that's kind of where I am now. And that's where I have been the last few years. Um, I just started to realize that I just needed that balance more than, you know, kind of going extreme and trying to be the most fit person or the most, most you know, mentally right person or whatever it may be. And um, that's kind of where I am now. And, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that because I'm, I'm, I'm in a good place where I'm, I'm able to say, hey, you know what, I could do this, that, and a third. And I don't have to go that extreme with it and be, you know, the healthiest. And, um, I'm, I'm, you know, it, it, was, it was a challenge to get to that point. But um, I'm just extremely happy that I've been able to find that balance. And that's kind of what I try to give off to a lot of people, because I feel like a lot of times we tend to, you know, think that we have to go to a really far extreme to be, you know, the complete opposite of whatever it may be that we're trying to change. And I try to let people know that we really don't have to go all the way there, but we could at least get halfway there or, or, or to a certain point that makes us better than we were before. And that's definitely a good start. So kind of just wanted to start the conversation with that if you guys have anything that you know resonates with that or, or they can go off of that please chime in yeah 100 percent um I, I i really can't agree more and i just wanted to touch on um a few things just about the internet before we dive into you know web 2 web 3 and and and, and that difference but i think that the internet in general um you know it's it's psychologically arousing, right? You know, you are stimulated constantly. And I think that pe the, the, the main misconception is that, um, you know, people think that the internet or, you know, YouTube and all of these free um, platforms are free. But um, I, you know, you could argue that they're not, right? You're paying your attention. Um, and through that attention, um, you know, there's a lot of ripples that can be affecting your physical, mental, and you know, emotional and spiritual health. And, you know, it's something that I notice with myself um, personally, just in the Web3 space, you know, it's such a grind. We're in like this, this Wild West uh, gold rush where everyone is trying to, you know, innovate quickly and, and you know, we're early. So everyone's just rushing. And um, that has taken a toll on, on, on my, you know, mental and physical health um, just from all of the hours on screen time. You know, it's just such an unhealthy thing that, um, you know, it can result in little sleep. I know I haven't been sleeping as, as well as I did before. Um, I uh, definitely haven't been eating as, as much for longer periods of time between meals. I've noticed and um, even physical activity becomes limited and I think that this can lead to a negative user experience it can cause mental health problems like or enable them like depression um, OCD or you know just your relationships 
in life and, and with family. And I just think that it's something that's so overlooked and not really talked about just because, you know, it's, it's the internet, it's here and, and, and it's a powerful platform for all of us creators to now, you know, express ourselves. But in the process of doing so, it can be a little bit draining and um, have these these negative repercussions that I've noticed in my personal life. And I know I'm not the only one who's losing sleep in the NFT space just because of, you know, that constant fear of missing out or that constant, you know, fear just in the air of, of do I need to sell or do I need to buy? You know, it's such a volatile market that it results in, in you know, some negative repercussions from from that. So I, I, I just wanted to mention that and visual, I love your story. I think it's very powerful and I'm happy to hear that, you know, you're on like a, a, an upward trend in your journey. It's definitely amazing always just to hear, you know, the, the, the better sides of, of things. And, you know, I, I think that everyone has the potential to get better. Um, it's just a matter of using these tools and avenues to actually propel yourself into a better state of mind or, um, you know, whether it's mentally, physically, financially, um, you know, there's so many options out there, but I just wanted to say that. I know Mickey, you have your hand up. You want to go ahead and share a few things? Yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, visual, that was an amazing story. Um, and a lot of those symptoms that you saw, um, come from like when you're not exercising and not resting um, and you become fully engulfed in your work you tend to burn yourself out um, and there's like different symptoms that can come from that you can start investing your money poorly because you're not sleeping you're not doing your due diligence you can um, insomnia you start getting in terrible sleeping habits or your diet gets weird as Cal was saying he's he's eating at weird times of day when you're doing that you screw up your eating schedule and it messes with your sleep and your metabolism and it all correlates to your happiness and your productivity um so it's important it's really important to take breaks whether it's just walking walking is a simple form of exercise that anyone can do. Take a walk around the block outside in the middle of your day. Go just think, take in the nature. Um, reading before bed instead of binge watching Netflix episodes. I know there's so many good shows out there, um, but you just got to put down the screen time because it really messes up your sleep schedule as well. Um, as well as hydrating yourself is something really big um, that I've started taking more seriously lately. And I've started noticing an increase in my energy and my motivation and productivity just because I'm keeping my body right. And so that's what I have to say about that. Jack, you wanted to say something? Yeah, 100%. Um, I especially um, last year I was very much um, on the more active side of things uh, maybe that's a little bit correlated with my involvement in the NFT space um, but I was definitely eating a lot better I was definitely exercising a lot more I was run I was running every other day and lifting every other day and I can unfortunately I can kind of say I'm like definitely seeing the impacts of and not doing all that stuff um, and I think it's just important to recognize the fact that you know that is very real. Um, you know, I've struggled, been struggling to find like the motivation to go out and run and it's honestly made me more anxious, more tired, um, less productive. Um, so I think that's kind of, that's almost an important thing to sort of experience is the importance of not, not just the fact that like, oh, these are good things to do, but also, you know, kind of what happens, you know, when you don't do these things and why they're so important and just refining that reason, um, in terms of, you know, starting that stuff back up. So having um, a few more years under my belt, I think, than most of you, I just want to say that um, life is like a cycle of pulling it together, 
you know, where you kind of get get the exercise back and the, the nutrition and, you know, you get your routines in balance and it all flows and then you get distracted or uber motivated by something else and uh, it all goes out the window, you know, and you just are driven towards something and that just takes this enormous priority and and as you know we're hearing everybody talk tonight like then this other stuff falls apart and then you realize like okay time to pull it back together again and so from where I sit like that's life that's just how it goes you know uh, you're going to have really great stretches and then you're going to have these stretches where you're scrambling or flailing or you know tanking um and then you get back up and and figure it out and you you just keep learning and and getting through the growing pains and kind of transforming yourself along the way so it's just hanging in there during the hard parts because when you're in the hardest parts, it feels like it's going to last forever. You know, it's just, it can get so demoralizing when you're burned out and stressed and overstimulated and just feel off. It's, it's really hard. So. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, these are, these times are, you know, the times where you're in, under the most pressure, but, you know, I mean, it's still a bit corny, but pressure makes diamonds, and as long as you can, you know, keep pushing through that, um, those are serious, um, character-building moments, um, and we should, as much as they suck in, um, in the short term, uh, there's, there are important moments to go through. Yeah, I really resonate with that. Um, I know this is something that we were kind of talking about in our mental Monday space, and that is just like the trials and tribulation, the tribulations of life, right? It's just this constant roller coaster where you're going to be up and down and sideways and upside down. Um, but you know, if you can just hang on to that ride and um, try and enjoy, you know, the the good moments and understanding that you know everything is temporary right like life is temporary pain is temporary so if you can just make it through you know the hard times and and give yourself kind of a leg up to get out of you know these these hard cycles um it's just makes life a little bit more manageable at least something that i've noticed with my story is you know resilience is power Tenacity is power. If you can, you know, keep going through failure after failure. um, I think Winston Churchill said, you know, the the most successful person is one who can go from failure to failure with no um, change in enthusiasm. And, uh, you know, it's easier said than done, obviously. But keeping that energy up um, is just it's it speaks volumes to everyone around you. Right. I I noticed in my case, no one wanted to be around me because I was just this negative person that was traumatized by, you know, depression and, you know, the the sob story. And, you know, everyone has a hard story in the end, but how you can kind of go about that um, and manage, kind of micromanage those emotions to understand like, yeah, this is this is a temporary thing. And, you know, you're not the only one feeling uh, these kind of these kind of ways and and vibrations. And, um, you know, if you can find that better place and and that support system that, you know, we're trying to build here with the narwhals, um, you know, it just might take a little bit off of your load. And um, I know with my team, you know, we've been we've had such a big workload that it has been draining and it has led to burnout, but, um, you know, we're, we're still going and, you know, some may say that, um, this is our trial and tribulation, but we're, we're, we're happy to be here. We're happy to, um, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, we're, we're here for it. And, um, I just think that 
you know, it really speaks to your character if you're able to kind of persevere through the hard times um, and not just ride the, the high times, right? Because uh, like a roller coaster, you go up and down and up and down. So um, just having that level state of mind, I think has helped me out a lot um, and, and just kind of managing my emotions and just being the best person that I can be at the end of the day. You know, we're not perfect human beings were imperfect all of us but um you know we we can get by um with a little help from our friends and and, and positive support systems asking for help it's so so crucial and i hope everyone that's listening can kind of gain some some insights on just asking for help it's so it's so much easier than than it sounds but um you know it can really help you in the long term and just navigating this this unknown of the future no one knows what comes ahead but um yet we still have the courage to keep going forward and keep moving forward despite you know all of this gray area in front of us and i think that's just so powerful um you know just speaks a ton to who you are and and what you can do and your talents so I just wanted to share a little bit about that. I know non-fungible therapist has come up on stage. I want to welcome him. How are you doing, my friend? Hey, guys. How's everybody doing? We're great. great. How are you? We're feeling good. I like the I like the idea of what you were kind of touched on, that like you have to ask for, for help and you need the help. I think it's an interesting topic because I've, I've noticed that a lot with people that I, I wonder what's going on there when people struggle to like they fight the urge to ask for help like or like they ask for help when it's too late or when they like when nothing like why why are people so resistant to asking for help i know that there's a lot of reasons and i have some ideas but i don't know how you guys can relate to that because i know some some are really easy and quick to do it while others aren't yeah yeah i think that go ahead uh, yeah, I'm sorry, man. It just uh, made me think of something actually today, man. I'm a father of four girls, and um, you know I have a lot of teaching moments with them, and and it's interesting that you brought that up, um, uh, therapist, because you know I was talking to one of my daughters today. They were they were asking me about um, you know in in class they were said they said that somebody had had a presentation and they weren't really sure how to go about it, and they were talking to them about it to my daughter, and she was like. You know, I didn't really know what to say to him and, then, you know, trying to give him some some inspiration and like a little a little pep in his step to kind of go up there and, and have the energy or, or, you know, get the nerves out of his system. And and she, you know, we're, we're kind of like naturally, um, you know, well-spoken and, and excited and enthusiastic here in my home. They get that from me, you know, like um, I have this this uh, this energy that I give to them. So they're not used to, um, you know, when people don't know how to, you know, speak in front of people or they're nervous about it and things like that. So I had to explain to them, like, you know, it's 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 normal. It's like everybody is different, obviously, for different reasons, too. Either you've never had that experience and that's why you're not able to do it because you don't you don't know how to go about it. You, you never learned it or you were never taught it. Or there could have been something that, that might have happened, you know, in that person, that, that kid's life that makes him feel like he can't go up there and speak. Um, or, or just, you know, just normal nerves, man. I mean, to this day, you know, I've been on, I've been on, on hundreds of stages. I've, I've toured, you know, the East Coast, the West Coast, the Midwest, uh, Europe. And, and to this day, if I go on a stage, I still get butterflies in my stomach. It's, it's difficult, you know, because you're, you're, you're realizing that um, you're, you're going to be in front of people. And no matter how good you do or, you know, how well you do or, or whatever it is that you're saying up there or doing or performing, somebody's going to have something to say about it, right? And um, at the end of the day, you know, it's kind of irrelevant because it's not really going to affect, you know, your craft or whatever it is that message you're trying to relay. But I think it's very difficult for everybody to get that in their mind and to, to really hold on to that idea that all those opinions and, ta- and, and thoughts don't matter. Um, so, yeah, man, just just wanted to touch on that because I, I think it's tough. I don't think everybody could do everything that they feel they need to do there's conversations that we need to have and when people need help you know like like you mentioned earlier Kyle like you know we gotta you know ask for help it's kind of hard I think it's hard for a lot of people to ask for help especially when we're talking about things like mental health like I think especially as a male I could I could really say that um I don't think these are conversations that that um I've had with too many other males you know especially one-on-one and when when they have 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 had them it's been like 
very like rare, <laughs> you know. So you're not and, having um, it with males; you're having it with narwhals. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly, a hundred percent. And that that's the that's the beautiful part about it, right? That's the beautiful part about it. But um, but yeah, man, I, I just I think it's I think it's tough for, for men. Um, you know, obviously as a man, I could say that, right? I could speak for myself, and um, that's been my experience, and obviously my experience with other men. But I feel like I've been have I've been able to have these conversations easier with with females, whether it be you know my wife, my sister, my mom, my daughters, than it is with an other male, especially like one on one. Like it's just it's awkward and. And um, I think a lot of us weren't raised to have those type of conversations. Like we're we're raised to be tough and macho and tough it out. And and um, I think that's that's tough on a lot of us. Yeah, I can't agree more. Um, I think that the toxic masculinity is just it's kind of heightened, and um, you know it's such a negative stigma that I'm glad that we can talk about you know on platforms like this. But um, yeah, I mean just personally like. I grew up playing Pop Warner football, and um, you, you you didn't really talk about your feelings, right? You you if you were hurt or you had some sort of cut or something, they told you to rub dirt in it and just go on playing, and that was kind of the mantra and the, and the mindset. And I know that <laughs> that's not normal now, but um, you know just the the way that um, you know just just being a male and, and and seeing it from my point of view, I'm I'm a little biased, but um, you know we're just yeah just kind of like what visual was saying we're raised to you know we're, we're the you know got to be the man of the house quote unquote and and support um be that rock right but you know we we definitely um are very emotional beings just as humans so it's it's not something that can be overlooked but yet it is so often and it is so discouraged in a lot of ways you know it's 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 hard to ask for help. And I think in a lot of times when you're in that dark place, you know, you get, in, you get in front of yourself, right? You get, you get in your own way when you're trying to find these resources or ask for help because, you know, there's that classical conditioned <laughs> mindset or, or voice that's saying, you know, no, you don't need this, you know, like you're, you're, you're the man, you don't need this. Um, you know, you can tough this out, but and, you know, it's just, it's such a negative thing, but it's so powerful when you can, um, you know, release, release that emotion and energy. And um, I'm, I'm really glad that we can have platforms like this where we can come together and just kind of share, you know, these, these thoughts and um, methods that we were, you know, classically conditioned to uh, think and, um you know, this is just my bias point of view, but I, I think that as the stigma kind of becomes normalized around mental health, so will these conversations. They will become more normal, like asking for help. Because some of the toughest, most badass people I know are, you know, big mental health enthusiasts, and they're there to understand, and they're there to talk, but, um, you know, it's just kind of climbing over that that ice block that can, um, you know, really turn off a lot of situations because, you know, people don't really feel comfortable um, talking about these things. But um, that's just my point of view. Yeah, agreed, agreed, man. Uh, Rock, I see you have your hand up. Just give me one second, man. I'm, I'm really curious to hear uh, from from Nikki. Um, what's up? What are, what are you thinking about this? Um, you know, everything we're kind of bringing it up, um, you know, from, from our, our points of, of view, um, I know you have a lot of stories, obviously, you know, with your experience and the things that you've been doing in the mental health field. And I'd love to hear some feedback from you. Um, I think like, you know, it, for me, it's a little different, right? Because I, in my journey to like control my mental health, I came to understand that like mental health exists on a spectrum, right? We have the way that I explain it is everybody is somewhere on the scale between Trump and Obama. And sometimes, some people are closer to Trump, some people are closer to Obama. It's like the scale of just batshit crazy to a total beacon of sanity. You know what I'm saying? And most of us fall somewhere in between. And like, but people like me who are actually mentally ill, uh, I have a very different experience than people who aren't and so what's been happening a lot lately 
because see we going through a nation nationwide worldwide actually mental health thing right now a lot of people are experiencing depression and a lot of people are experiencing anxiety because we just went through a whole ass pandemic right but the world is opening back up things are changing we're starting to get exposure to opportunities again and starting to be able to get our lives back and so as we do that i hope the people who weren't necessarily struggling as much before but had that experience i hope that they move forward with more empathy and compassion than they may have had in their life before because what happens a lot these days is those of us who live with mental illnesses get lumped in with people who are experiencing mental health issues and it's not the same that's like if i break my arm but i go to someone who has a severed limb and say look i'm like you i too have suffered that's some bullshit right because the difference is i'm going to my arm will heal i'll be fine but that person who has no limb they just will always have no limb that's a disability whereas what i'm going through is 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 momentary i'll get past it and so i'm i what i'm looking for when i'm looking for change in the mental health conversation is i'm looking for nuance i'm looking for depth i'm looking for range of understanding i'm looking for people who have experienced but de- depression but have gotten through it to understand their privilege and to show up for the people who can't get through it because it's part of who they are and they'll be you know like technically me i got treatment resistant depression i'm going to be navigating that for the rest of my life but that's very different than somebody who has bipolar who can't necessarily control when or when not they're present to their lives so when i'm looking for when i'm talking about mental health and when i'm talking about making a difference i'm looking at a shift in how we have these conversations the like like i've seen a beautiful shift over the past couple years about how we talk about queer people and even how people who are not black talk about black culture and black issues seeing people who are non black talk about black lives matter related issues and show up for us has been amazing i want to see that happen with them mental health because the stigma that i still experience to this day uh as a person who even is vocal and and is no i have a ted talk about mental health a whole ass ted talk and i still experience stigma and and if i'm going through that what are people going through who can't talk about it on major platforms so that's what i want to see and the interesting thing about web3 is of course it's going to be an anxiety inducing environment it's brand new we're on the cusp of something it's a lot of opportunity available so like if people are anxious and going through it because it is you kind of supposed to be i mean it's brand new like your your survival instincts yet the things i think and they supposed to be you're supposed to be doing but it i think it's important though that you understand that that's what's happening and it's important it's a big deal that you can even explain it that way cuz back in the day people didn't even have the language to say i am experiencing anxiety like most people would just be like i feel nervous there's some tightness in my chest like to actually know hey i have anxiety I probably need to back off. I probably need to be more physical and go run. I probably need to eat better. I probably need to hydrate. That's huge. Do you understand how huge that is? Do you understand 10 years ago would no man be saying that? You'd be looking at yourself like tough it up, don't be a bitch. But no, you can admit to yourself that you need, you know, to like look into your wellness, to tap into what's good for you. And I for one am here for it. I love that. I love that people like using this language. I love that people are seeing the positive you know like ways that they could use mental wellness because if we're taking that into this web 3 we're building then we going to have a way healthier internet and that's my <laughs> thoughts on that <laughs> i love it i love it nikki i love it love it so much i love that energy about it uh you know i mean i think your perspective is 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 just perfect it's perfect i, I believe that it, you know since we're going into something so innovative like web 3 that's that's you know has a lot of uh promises at the moment and a lot of people you know putting it to action i feel like having a shift in the conversation about mental health is a major key you know whether you've experienced it on on low levels or high levels you know you've been severely impacted by it or or not severely impacted by it i think it's important to take that conversation and just shift it in a whole different way and 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 really um you know because there's more people on you know getting on board with with this concept right that it's important to talk about it it's important to heal ourselves and it's important to educate people about it 
So I think we're getting a lot of different type of people that are that are coming on to the space of mental health and the importance of it. So it's definitely important to have that conversation switched up. So truly appreciate that that insight. That's that's awesome. What's good, Rock? Um, not gonna lie, I kind of lost my original point just because that was so amazing listening to what you were saying, Lynette. I really appreciate that, and um, I really appreciate you opening um, my perspective because I honestly never really considered the difference between, um, you know, uh, a mental illness and um, somebody experiencing difficulties with uh, mental health, you know, with the permanency versus temporary um, aspect. Um, and I think that's such an it's a, that's such an such a huge part about uh, you know Web three and these Twitter spaces is you know being able to just uh, break down these borders in terms of you don't have to care about what country you're what country you're from um, you know um, what you look like it's just a matter of we're here as humans talking about these new topics and being able to open each other's perspectives to different things that people have never thought of. Being able to have your mind be pliable like that is so important, especially in this day and age, because the world is changing so fast, and we need to adopt ad- adapt to each other and really just like I just I keep saying over and over, but just break down these barriers. It's so important to just really get that those bridges of understanding between people. Yes, yes, agreed, agreed. Uh, Nikki, I, I want to talk about your play. I'm very curious about it. I honestly know nothing about it. You know, I've heard a lot about you from Pete, and, you know, I, I think you're amazing. I definitely heard about you, um, you know, years ago, actually. I think I came across, um, it might have been like a Tribune or, or a Sun-Times article about you and the things that you were doing. And, um, you know, I've kind of always had my eye on everything that you're doing, and, and, you know, I definitely salute to all the work. But I'm very curious to hear about the play and, um, you know, how that kind of came about and, and, and what you're what you're doing with that. Because I know you said you're doing other things outside of the play because of the play. So I'm definitely um, looking forward to hear about that. So please tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I wrote my play Get Out Alive. It's a musical about depression. And I wrote it at the end of um, my suicide recovery. So it was... Uh, I was still going through it and the guy who's kind of like my like my mentor he told me to just write about what I had been going through at that time I had started doing these videos for Afropunk talking about mental health and what nobody talking about that in like 2015 2016 everybody was still talking about me too and so I started talking about mental health and uh because I had to because it was the only way that I could explain why I disappeared and why I was back And I couldn't think of no lie that I could get away with. And I'm like, okay, well, I kind of got... And then, too, like, if I told people I was going through it, then it would hold me accountable. Because I was, like, deeply still living with suicidal ideation at the time. And so I started talking about mental health. It started... My video started being pretty popular. And so my mentor told me to just write about it. And it took me a while to do it because I had never written a play. But I ended up writing the first act of one. I became the first black woman to have my work funded by American Music Theater Project. Then we uh, we did really well with that. And then we got an opening at Steppenwolf, which in Chicago is like this big, respectable, fancy theater here. And we sold out our debut at Steppenwolf. And then a whole worldwide pandemic happened and every theater shut down. And it was like, womp, womp. So we lost our um, extended run for my musical about depression, which was depressing. It was depressing to lose my extended run. So we decided to turn it into a film. And I got an investor for the film through Facebook because he saw me post a video of me singing one of the songs from my play to my brother when he came home from Afghanistan. So social media can make you money. I got the investor for, for my film from Facebook. So we did the film and now it's been in a bunch of festivals and now the actual play that we did the film of is returning to theater. So my musical about depression is going to be doing a 19 show run over the summer while also being in film in film festivals. And like I'm excited about that, right? Because there is a time not too long ago where stories about depression, especially from people who look like me, we're not being told. I feel like there are no safe spaces for black women who are mentally ill. There are no safe spaces for, for queer people who are mentally ill. There are no safe spaces for women 
who are mentally ill, like people that are not, you know, like there's really not no safe space for none of us, but specifically these different demographics of people whose voices can always be excused away with language to explain their behavior. If a woman is being aggressive, she's being a bitch. If she's crying a lot, you know, she's being weak or she's being, uh, you know, she's being nuts, schizo, she's being frantic. Or like if a queer person is, is, is troubled, oh, well, they just shouldn't be queer. That's the problem. If a black person is being troubled, oh, they're aggressive. And if you can always explain it away. If a man is being troubled, oh, well, he has a problem. It's like when it comes to mental health, there's always a way to dismiss. There's always a way to dismiss away the problem. But with any other health condition, it's like a person that has diabetes, they just have diabetes. They just need insulin. It's okay. Or if you break your leg, oh, you just have a broken leg. It's okay. Or if you have asthma, oh, you just need an inhaler. It's okay. But when you have a mental illness, suddenly, suddenly, that's the one health condition. Hey, that's the line, buddy. You can't have that problem. And so with my play, I actually put it out there that I live with a mental illness. And not only do I live with one, honey, I thrive with it. Because I, like, the things that I achieve and the things that I'm doing stuff, I'm not even allowed to talk about yet. I don't even know artists who are not mentally ill who are achieving some of the things that I'm achieving. So, you know, neurodiversity is a thing. We need every kind of brain. And I resent the idea that people who are mentally ill are, like, the people who have the bad brain. Like, neurotypical is just the standard that we should all aspire to. No. I don't believe in like the, the the American beauty standard and I don't believe in the American neurotypical standard. I don't want to be neurotypical. I want to be who I am with the brain I have, but just live well. And my play is kind of like my way of speaking on that and celebrating that. That's that's amazing. You know, I, I, I 100% can relate to the fact that you're saying that, you know, we got to have these these pretty much diverse brains, right? Because I feel like I fall into so many categories. And, you know, if 10 different people meet me and have conversations with me or, or build on, with me on different levels, they're all 10 going to have different things to say about me. And I think a lot of times that's, that's you know, it's kind of like a blessing and a curse because it's become a major problem in my life because you know one person will, will, will come across the other person and be like oh he, you know he's not like this he's like this and he's like that and and then some people will be like oh i expected you to be this way because so and so told me you're kind of like this and i'm like dude i'm a human being man like and, and i'm an artist so i'm already like uh, you know my mind's already like just 99 different ways shifting because i'm always thinking about something an idea you know something i want to create uh, a problem i want to solve um you know and there's so many levels to to just me as a person and I think a lot of times, like, we're not really looked at that way, you know, whatever we may be. And, and you know, I think you mentioned a lot of things that, that obviously are, are overlooked and, and, and underserved that, that, you, that you touched on, you know, from, from being, a, a, you know, a black woman, queer, all those things. Like, they, 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 those groups of people are overlooked. And to me, there's always somebody that's overlooked. And, and, and that's one of the biggest problems with something like mental health. Like, why, why am I being overlooked because I'm this? Why am, why am I being overlooked because I'm that? And then on top of it, like you said, Nikki, that mental health is already kind of like, ah, you got this, this is a problem, like, ah, whatever. You know, it's it's not a big deal, get over it. You know, and that, that's kind of like the the um, the the thought process behind a lot of it. I think until, until you know, recent times when, you know, it's, it's great to have people like yourself that are kind of pushing the envelope with that and bringing it out to the open. And, and I truly see you, especially being from Chicago, as being someone that's definitely, you know, kind of been somebody that's been pushing that envelope for for long enough to where you, you've set the standard for a lot of that. I, I definitely, oh, truly believe that. Thank you for admitting it. Because so 100%. 100%. You know, like I told you, I so look, look, like, I, I keep so it. I keep it 100. I, and, and, you're, and you're from the crib. So it's like to me that alone, like being from Chicago alone. Shit. That's a that's a major level. Like if you're if you're able to have any type of success from Chicago, 
from the city, uh, black, brown, uh, from a certain neighborhood, you know, gay, woman, like, you know, a single mother, a single father, like, any of those type of things, and especially any combination of that, like, that's it. To me, you, you're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it on a, on a major level. You know, a lot of times you hear in, in, in public, you know, uh, in movies or in, or in TV shows, you hear, you know, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. Nah, I, I, look, I've been to New York, man. They're killing it over there. Like, if you can make it in Chicago, like, you, you can make it. Because it's, it's wild over here. A lot of people don't understand it. Until you've lived here, you could visit here. Or you could be from, you know, Wisconsin or Minnesota or, or, or wherever else and come over here and live here for a few years. But until you're born and raised and you're able to do things here, like, I feel like, you know, it's, 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 it's not really, like, understood, you know, what you've been able to do. And I truly appreciate and respect that. I sincerely appreciate you saying that because there have been so many people from Christopher Lamarck with the coffee, hip hop and mental health thing to just like influencers taking and appropriating my work taking and appropriating my event series and just never crediting me like just the women do not get credited women do not get credited when people are inspired by our work it's almost as if men think that they will suddenly lose their manness if they just acknowledge that their work was inspired by a woman and if they credit us for the things that we contribute and that's not just a black woman thing Ask Dr. <laughs> ask the doctor, ask Dr. Jane. Men do not be wanting to credit nobody for their work. And so I have had a lot of people um, benefit from me having a mental illness and me having to tap out sometimes because I have to prioritize my mental health no matter what. But like I got my stuff under control now, so they finna see me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, and, you know, you saying that people have taken your work and appropriate it and, and, and don't give you the credit. Um, that's trash. That's trash to me. Like, I, I don't know. I don't respect that in any way. And to be honest with you, like, that's the way I've always been, no matter what I've always done. Um, I've always been a champion of the underdog and a champion of the overlooked and, and, and taken advantage of, you know, because I think there's so many groups of us, no matter what category we could fit in. You know, there's a lot of us that have been overlooked. Um, you know, we've we've done things, whether it's in our city, in our in our in our, you know, creative space and in, in, in our workplace, whatever it is that we're doing, you know, somebody's always like trying to take and run away and like not give credit or, you know, we've all I think been in the situation, especially as creatives, as artists, as um, you know, entrepreneurs, all all of those all those cases fall into like, oh I heard him say this, let me grab this or 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 he introduced me to so and so, let me let me go let me go run away and do this. Like it happens, you know? And to this day when it happens, it's like whatever. Like I, I've just realized that, you know, those type of people they're not really they're not truly taking anything from me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not I'm not giving them the power for that no more. No. I'm not gonna do that to, to myself. They don't even have the ability to take nothing from you. That's another reason why I like this. Um, this narwhals thing is more than just oh let's connect mental health and some nfts no they're actually trying to get people resources they actually have a mental health professional involved like you have no idea how people will just throw the words mental health in front of anything for clout and then when i bring it up when i call people out on it then i'm the bad guy so i guess i'm just gonna be the bad guy because i think it's corny to use mental health for clout and marketing purposes i think it's corny and that's why i like narwhal because they're trying to give people resources it's a big deal it's if, if you if you guys can pull this off shit like people are gonna follow your lead excuse my language i'm sorry because they're from your mama but you, you know cuss I girl you cuss <laughs> i love it go nikki go you got this but it, like, you got you this off, like people are gonna follow this as a as, as what y'all doing i think it's amazing i think it's an excellent way to utilize your resources i think I just love it. I love what you're trying to do. And, and, and at the end of the day, you kind of want people to follow in this pattern. You want people to try to replicate what y'all doing. Because if you do it and it's successful, it can really make a difference for a lot of people. So, Nikki, um, I wanted to say something personal to you, which is um, you deserve everything that you're getting. I just checked out your website. Like, Go girl. I mean, really so impressed. And, um, you had said, you, you know, to me, like, um, you know, about the recognition or whatnot that, um, I feel, I kind of feel lucky. I, I, and I think there's white privilege involved with that. Like that, as I said, like when the Washington post picked up 
my thing with it's called psych fit like I, I kind of I, I kind of feel like you know I got dealt that hand in life you know and I just wanted to say that and I, I love your grit and and your authenticity you are gonna help so many people and so I want to pivot to say to the narwhals you guys are also going to help so many people because of this kind of conversation like guys don't talk about this but they need to and it's inside of a lot of you know of of all young men you know these issues these insecurities the stress the burnout the FOMO I mean it's um you're you're putting voice to something so important and it's going to create an important ripple effect and I know it feels like it kind of hasn't happened yet but my god it's so early and you just have to be patient and um uh you know take it a day at a time like just put it together and it'll happen I appreciate the kind words so much and you guys have me ready to run through a brick wall let me just say like I'm getting <laughs> the craziest goosebumps let's go like, so excited and yeah, I mean, I love this. The fact that we can come together on this platform and just, you know, share a little insights about how to feel a little bit better about yourself. I think that just in America, there's just so much negative self-image and, and perspective on, on who we are and, and, and our culture. And, you know, it, it, it's something that is just so dear to my heart that I think is, you know, really overlooked and to, to be able to use um, you know, my voice and platform to, to do something like this really warms my heart. Um, personally, you know, uh, uh, you know, we, we could have done something different where we're, you know, raising a ton more money for a different idea. But, I, you know, I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to really just do something authentic and, and be myself and, and come out here and, and connect with people who feel the same type of energy. And, and we're doing that tonight. And I'm just I'm just so happy to be here. Um, Nikki, we did just send you a narwhal. So please check your wallet address. And um, yeah, I just really, really happy. <laughs> check it out. I hope you like it. I know I know you know what it is already, but um, wait, all right. yeah. I don't see it yet. Hold on, wait, wait. It would be on OpenSea, right? I'm still learning. Y'all got to teach me. Uh I love oh, it. I'm I love so it, with Nikki, you, Nikki. I... I'm so with you. I'm still figuring it out too. <laughs> I got it. I said Yo. <laughs> I told them they have to write it out. We need it, like you know, how to buy an NFT for dummies. Yes. It's a must. It's a must. I mean, and I definitely want to get into, um, you know, going over some things with Nikki because she's new to the space. She's she's you know literally got her first NFT from from the narwhals. Um, you know, I think she just got her dot ETH today. So, so I'm excited for her. Like we, we gotta, we gotta go over some things with you for sure. But really quick, I just, I just wanted to touch on the fact that you said, you know, that a lot of people, um, especially in this space in, I don't mean this, this space that we're in right now, I mean like web three in general and NFTs, they use, you know, mental health, the label and then just toss it around somewhere that, that really stuck out to me. Cause that's definitely something that I've thought about from the beginning that I got into into NFTs and, and I noticed it being thrown around and like you said it's, it's corny right because it's just like come on like like what do you really know or what do you really feel about this or what are, what are you really doing you know and that's really what it comes down to like what's where's the action at or where's the experience at or where's the education at and um that's why I think it's great to have these types of conversations and, and bring things like that into the light so when we're we're involved in, in, in projects and helping projects like the Narwhals, like people understand that there's really something behind it. There's really something going on. There's something important that's happening behind it. It's not just that label. It's not just in somebody's bio. It's not just somebody trying to sell you something using that as a push. And I think that's an amazing point to make. Um, I know Mickey had his hand up and also um, the therapist had his hand up. What's good, Mickey? I'll be quick, but I wanted to go back to what Nikki was saying about not getting enough credit for the work that she's put in. And I think social media is just such a powerful tool to get the credit that you do deserve because you can, um, people can see your original work and they know it's you behind something 
and you can leverage that tool to just create a really powerful transition and for people not having like uh safe spaces to go to for certain demographics um there's social media group like i've seen my mom's in a facebook group that is about empowering women um and it's all women inside it and they send in like daily poems and other things just to brighten each other's day and stuff like that and i think resources like that can be such a great tool in pushing this mental health awareness um and making people feel comfortable about speaking to it for me it's been because i'm mentally ill and it took a very long time like and i'm sure like dr jane can vouch like sometimes for people who have for me i have treatment resistant depression i get uh, i have complex post traumatic stress disorder so i had it took a long time for me to figure out how to get it under control and sometimes that meant having to step away from social media and as an artist that's like a death sentence like you're not supposed to do that but i got to do that sometimes like that's how i get my mental illness under control and people who don't necessarily have mental illness are able to benefit from always being able to be present. So in that respect a lot of people have appropriated my work. But the thing that they didn't do was all of the work that you should be doing when you're not online. So they weren't developing relationships with angel investors. They weren't developing relationships with people who can give them resources. They weren't building a team around them to sustain them when they had to be offline. I did that stuff. So game on. <laughs> <laughs> love it love it love it that's that's great that's great it's like like you you're truly the one is winning at the end and that's that's what's dope i love that i love that what's good therapist yeah well i'm i'm interested in this in, in nikki story i mean it's a pleasure meeting you uh, on the topic that that you mentioned as well as visual about the how mental health is kind of just like become this buzzword that's everywhere and the narrows are actually doing something I I think that it's definitely important to point that out because it a lot of times people kind of overuse it and it becomes like this predatory thing like this marketing tactic definitely for sure but I I've been I I like to be I like to say that I'm I'm kind of connected in the space with the mental health and the TE stuff and there's you'd be surprised everybody's the feel there's a lot of genuine effort from a lot of places so I would I would just like hazard to say that because I I wouldn't want people to just approach approach these things with with maybe like too much suspicion. I I mean but NFTs in, in general and all businesses have risks and I definitely think approach things with caution but there's a lot of people out there who like Nonar was for example that that are that are very welcoming and they're definitely genuinely trying something or at least I feel like they are so so definitely hats out to you guys and and also just I guess always approach things with caution, but I like to err on the side of trust and optimism. That's just me, I, I guess. I've seen a lot of really cool people doing, like for Web three, like doing really cool, genuine things for mental health. I agree with you on that. The people I'm talking about that drive me nuts are the influencers, the influence yes. motivation speaking to talk to people with depression who literally have no capacity to process motivation because they are depressed. Like those are the people that drive me nuts. Influencers that utilize mental health as a buzzword. It drives me nuts because I'm I, I'm I I'm, I have a disability as a result of having a mental illness. So that drives me nuts. But then you have awesome people like Narwhals who reached out to me and got me really interested in what they're doing. And they're and you know this chick Michaela who's doing stuff for mental health. Like I've seen a lot of people who are doing really cool stuff. So I agree with you. Yeah, I want to uh, speak more to that aspect because it's also um, it's it's honestly prevalent um, even outside of areas like mental health. Um, I'm in finance right now in a, in a class, and uh, we actually had to drop an ESG um, ETF, which is ESG is basically you know like a fund that supports um, like climate change or like you know like 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 good like public goods. Um, But we had to we had to drop it because we realized it was more of a marketing stunt. Like we looked into the the the, the, the ETFs holdings, and none of them were really, you know, pro- promoting you know actually helping climate change and other things like that. And it's a shame to see that it's sort of spreading across all all topics that 
are supposedly like a genuine good for the world, but in reality are just being used as a marketing stunt. So I hope that we do start to see more of a transition in the world towards, you know, actually doing something about it instead of just sticking a label on something and selling it. Can't agree more. And I just wanted to say thank you for all the kind words to everyone. I mean, this project is truly a passion project from the heart. And, you know, we're just doing our best here. I'm, I'm just, I really just want to put the narwhals, you know, before myself. And obviously that, that can be a little unhealthy, but don't worry about me. I'm, I'm just really grateful, um, you know, to have these platforms where we can connect and, and share things. And, um, you know, it's not often that a project's, the founding teams are in Twitter spaces and you can actually hear their voice and their sincerity and, you know, their, their vision and truly um, employ these, these strategies with the rest of the community and, and being transparent and being, you know, integral. And that's what I want to do. And that's something that, you know, with my journey in mental health, I had to completely restart. I, I'm a much different person than I was a few years ago. And, um, I, I wanted to treat this project kind of the same way, right? I want to be a good character in this space, but more than just that, I want to be a light that, 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 that can shine on other people who, you know, maybe are just in the dark. And I think that this pandemic, I think that, you know, just given the last five years and, and the state of the world right now, you know, there's a lot of stress and panic and, and anxiety and um, just being able to provide some sort of resource for people to actually smile or laugh you know i mean that to me is invaluable and um you know obviously we're doing this subscription box service so you actually get something from your nft instead of just a profile picture you know you can actually use it to redeem stuff um i feel like most projects are just kind of you know they're there and they're hype and they have this marketing and that's great and um, you know, it pumps your bags, but it's the financial interest, right? At the end of the day in the web three space. Well, we want to kind of change that narrative and, and, and focus more on, on the heart and, and the brain and, and how you can be a better person each and every day. And that was one thing that, you know, I, I did by myself and I want to try and help others who maybe are feeling the same type of way. So that's just a, a little bit of, of, around, you know, the why and, um, I'm just really happy that we can come up here, connect, and we're going to keep doing everything we can. We had a really awesome meeting earlier about restructuring our organization and just being, you know, better, um, you, you know, better from a business point of view and, and, and helping us help the community in the most efficient way that we can. And I'm just really grateful for, for everyone up here on stage and, I'm, I'm kind of flattered by all the kind words. I, I'm kind of speechless, but yeah, I, I just want to say I appreciate each and every one of you guys so much. Um, it's just been an amazing journey. We're just going to keep going, you know? It's like, that's life, and uh, I'm excited. That's awesome. That's awesome, Kyle. I appreciate the insight on the project, man. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about what you guys are going to be doing. I just want to reset the room really quick. So we're here with the Narwhals. We're with Nikki Lynette. We're talking about mental health, Web3, uh, the effects of mental health, and um, just bringing up a lot of things that, you know, obviously have been on our minds and, and having a really great conversation. I want to bring up anybody that, that's interested in speaking, might have a question for any of us, has something to say. I just ask that you please keep it relevant to the topic. Uh, we're not lo looking for anybody to show any projects or anything like that. Just please come up and, um, and request to speak and we'll bring you guys up. And, um, you know, as, as I say that, you know, while we get anybody that might want to come up and speak, I definitely want to get into, let, let, let's, let's talk a little NFTs talk here. Nikki, let's, let's get you, let's get you educated a little bit. Like, I know you got to have some questions, like, like, please, what's on your mind with the space? Like, what are you trying to figure out? What's, what are you looking at? Like, what is this crazy stuff? Like, please ask away. Let's, let's help her out. Literally everything is confusing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's a right, so so ask me like ask me or, or or the narwhal team any of us like the most basic thing that you could think of that's just like blowing your mind that you're like yo what is this shit uh let me think it took me so long to, to buy my domain if i it, it was it took embarrassingly long it took so long i didn't even want to tell pete 
how long it would take me to figure out how to buy it. Cause I, I, but I figured it out for myself. Um, I guess like, so I know when it comes to NFTs, it's really strongly about communities. So are people building their communities on Discord or are they building it? Is it just all of their social medias or like, do you understand what I'm asking? Like, where are the communities? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I get it. I get 100%. So, I mean, there's definitely a lot of Discord building. A lot of it. A lot of it. There's people that are, like, like legit, like, experts on that stuff and, and, you know, spend 24 hours a day on Discord or they have somebody from their team or several people from their team in Discord 24-7. Me, on the other hand, from the collector aspect, from the artist aspect, from every aspect, I am staying away, far, far away from Discord. I am not a fan. I tried to get in it. It's very, it's just, it's too busy. There's too much going on. And, and there's just, uh, there's just, I don't like the, the, the UI of it. It's, I'm just not a fan. I'm not a fan at all. I'm, I'm social media. Like you can see me on Twitter all day. You can see me on Instagram, anywhere else, like where I'm able to kind of communicate. building those communities on discord or building them on on twitter um i've seen you know a little bit of tiktok a little bit of facebook a little bit of instagram but i think twitter is really the main hub this is really where like as a collector this is the first place i came to and started seeing nfts and was like hey what is this i'm interested and then i started to realize like yo a lot of people are building here on twitter and uh, i think when when the spaces got introduced like that really gave it like another aspect of, of building and um i know before that which has obviously got inspired by a clubhouse was a major place that people were building on about nfts so um that's that's definitely you know that's my perspective on it and i see that rock has his hand up what's good yeah i definitely want to speak to that point um pretty much all of crypto is either on twitter or discord or clubhouse um most DeFi protocols, um, their communities, quote unquote, their communities aren't like building community isn't as essential when you're building a, a DeFi protocol. It's more about the product, but that's how they communicate with their users. That's how they get new ideas. But you're totally right. The 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 disdain for Discord is definitely uh, pretty commonplace and is starting to spread actually. And a lot of people are out there right now trying to build more. Uh, decentralized uh, chatting platforms on which people can build their communities. So for now, it's on Discord, Twitter, um, other things like that. But hopefully the space is looking to move away from it and go to something more decentralized and more user friendly. Yeah, I'd just like to touch on the common misconception of NFTs because I think people, they hear NFTs and they're just like, whoa, like, what is that? Like, I couldn't even fathom the blockchain or, or any of this. But in reality, these NFT projects and collections, they are pretty much small businesses, right? They are publicly traded small businesses and their stock market is like OpenSea and their mint is like the public offering to anyone who wants to invest. And then these communities are, are then built around these investors who have shared interest in the NFT and in the roadmap, the vision, where it's going in the team. And um, they, yeah, they do get together in Discord typically. And Telegram is a very popular um, application for crypto and NFTs in general. But yeah, the Discord is, is more of like the medium where they can go and discuss and the team can get insights on the user experience and kind of, you know, get an idea of, of the vibes of the, of the investors and kind of make decisions based off that. They don't have to make the decision, um, but they can. And, and we see popular tools and, and projects like um, DAOs that, that are being created where it's literally the community governing every decision that's made by majority. And, you know, that, that can be a little dangerous, but, um, I think that at the end of the day, you know, these are small businesses trading in, in low volume markets um, and they're small businesses at the end of the day, right? Um, so your your NFT is like your stock in, in that business or in that collection. And, you know, there's other collections, of course, that are 
on every industry, music, art, you know, there's there's one of one artists who are just selling their art and that's the business, right? You you own that this person's piece of art and that's valuable. Um, but there's so many other utilities that can be coming into play and that's why we're kind of seeing this this gold rush and people are getting so confused because they're like, what is an NFT? What what is it really? Well, it's verifying that you own this stock and no one else owns that stock that you have and therefore it has value because people believe in it, right? It's shared belief um, at the end of the day of why people have value in anything, right? They believe in it. Um, so I hope that kind of clears the air a little bit. I just know that so many people get so confused when they hear the word non-fungible token. Well, it's, you know, you don't really need to know anything about smart contracts. If you just need to understand that, you know, this is just a complex way of, of, of signing a, a contract and, and, and purchasing a shared um, interest in this venture. Um, that is Web3. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 great. That's that's a great way to break it down. Um, Nikki, something that I think is, is kind of interesting that, that I'm, I'm curious to, to get your perspective on is a lot of the uh, like slang or, or you know, kind of like words that are used in the space. Is there anything you've come across that, that you like have no idea what it means? I never know what any of it means. Like, <laughs> I, I'm serious. Like, I feel like. Okay, so I only recently understood. So there's there's stuff like gas fees where you don't understand it until you actually have a wallet and right. you're watching, and you know and you're trying to buy something, and you also don't understand like the the, the price of things. Like if somebody asks, well, how much does it cost? It's like, well, depends on what time of day, and what moment, and what's going on in the world. And I didn't understand that until I actually got in there and saw what was going on. But, like, I don't even remember some of the language because I don't, it, 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 it may, they may as well have been speaking French because I didn't. <laughs> can, 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 can we play a little game? Can I throw a couple words at you or, or like, like, like sayings and could you, <laughs> could you tell me what you think what they mean? I think that'll be hilarious. <laughs> oh my gosh. Come okay. on, let's do this. Let, let me give you, um, all right, if, if I say, if I say wag me. WGMI. What what would you think I'm saying to you? Something not appropriate to say in front of somebody's mom. <laughs> oh my God! Don't say it in front of the doctor, right? <laughs> what does it mean? Wag so, me! Oh my wag God! Me. <laughs> wag me! Wag me! W A G M I is we're all gonna make it. It's 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 a term that I've seen a lot of people use, which I personally can't stand. Never used it. Don't plan to ever use it. Because we ain't all going to make it. It's a fact. What we are we not all going to make it. <laughs> that, well, it's, and it's where like, are we well, going, right? Exactly. It's like, <laughs> like, well, <laughs> see, the, the, the consensus, I think, I think the consensus is that, that, that we're all going to get rich. You know, we're all going to get Lambos. We're all going to get mansions. And it's just not true. I think it's kind of ridiculous. It's kind of humorous, to be honest with you. But I've seen, from the beginning, I've seen so many people, like, use it and... and, and put it out there i even see people within their bios and things like that i'm like no bro we're, we're just we're definitely not all gonna make it like this is a grind this is definitely a grind let me let me throw a couple more at you um if i was to say nikki i know you're new to the space but you got a dyor do your own research hey there you go yeah. you win a free narwhal with a leather jacket for that one that's your prize <laughs> <laughs> yes, I definitely de my, do my own research. And there you I'm go. My lexicon to start saying to people. Yes, yes, that's real right there. All right, um, let me give you a couple more. A couple more. How about, um, hey, listen, I'm in your space. Is it okay if I show my project? Does that mean like try to sell yourself to a whole bunch of people who are not there to hear about your project? Yeah, 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 kind of in a sense, yeah, it's like, you know, people use the word shill, and and you know what the thing about it, and and, and, and it's like, my, my homegirl Bullish is in here, she, she's part of the IC Web 3 team, and, and we, we've been talking about it recently, how people use the word shill, like, I'm gonna shill my project, and it's basically like promoting your project, you know, I'm gonna talk about it, I'm gonna try to pretty much pitch it to you, you know, 
and and I think it's I don't know I'm not a fan of it I'm not a fan of the word so one thing that that you know we started doing with our spaces we we like projects and we like to say we're showcasing them because it's it's essentially what it is and especially as as people that are you know trying to create content and 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 talk about projects that we like that we enjoy that we collect or that you know we resonate with the mission or whatever it may be we're, we're showcasing those projects so so we're really trying to change that that language in the space because show is just kind of like Ugh. I don't know. It's kind of gross to me. I don't. I'm not really a big fan of it. So, I mean, look, um, it is kind of gross. I think like it's, showcasing, it's kind of like planned out. But when you're showing yes. something, you're kind of like butting in. You're like, it oh, sounds wait, slimy too, doesn't it? It's, it sounds slimy. Like, hey man, I'm gonna show my project. Like, come you're on, dude. <laughs> slimy. It sounds slimy. Like, it you does. Skither your. You have to skither in and and chill. Like, come on, no. Yes. Showcase. You spent hours creating this project showcase it highlight it Ex you go to an art exhibition you don't go to a art shill yes, exactly show, right exactly. Like, like let's 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 correct it and you know what today i went into gorilla mansion's room and i said listen james i love you although can we change the word shill and he literally edited his whole title to showcase and he goes listen i gave him the definition of shill he goes ew that's what it actually the definition of is i'm like yeah why are we so uneducated like google is right there why don't we why have we already not done our research on the word shill right so a question for the co-host i um lynette um question for you how do you start doing do your own research where do you start because this is the question I'm asking people because we're going to make a checklist and I've changed it to slow FOMO. So slow down your FOMO. Don't, I'm not saying don't FOMO in, but slow it down. Make sure you get your checks on your checklist so you don't get rugged. Okay, and you just more, said FOMO you, to her. I, I highly doubt that oh, Nikki FOMO. knows what FOMO is. FOMO, what is, well, what is FOMO, FOMO, Nikki? It's FOMO. It's, it's not MOFO, it's FOMO. <laughs> Is it fear of missing out? Hey, she got it. There you go. You win another prize. Your prize yes, is you get to yes. co-host on the on visuals <laughs> uh, space. <laughs> um, so I hate. I don't want to interrupt the flow too much, but I don't um, want to just drop out without saying goodbye because um, I gotta. I do have to go. But I have loved, loved, loved being a part of this. I've loved meeting you. Nikki and Visual and everyone else and um, I'm really looking forward to more spaces with you guys. Appreciate you, Doctor. Thank you. Oh, you bye. Take care. Yep, bye. bye. You bye, too. Mom, okay. Love you. Good night. Love you, Cal. Bye. Take bye, care. Walls. Okay. Bye. Have a good night, Dr. Baxter. Thanks. Okay. I, Take... um, to answer the question, I have been doing like um, some research for a while I, there's this chick her name is Michaela NFT and she does her own NFTs and sells them and she also has a, um, a online course that she sells for people who want to learn about it and she gave it to me for free and I've been I have not yet had time to really dive into it because I am you know busy doing stuff in the real world but a lot of stuff that I learned I learned just going into her Twitter spaces um, I will tweet her name right now so that y'all can um, see who I'm talking about but like she's really helpful she does stuff about mental health too and I like that's how I've been learning like I, I found it like within NFTs I'm not running into a lot of gatekeeping and I love that like please give me the information because we're trying to build an economy here right so people shouldn't be gatekeeping. You should be trying to teach people how to get into this space. Like, ideally, right? Because if we do, then more people will be in it, more money, you know, like, it, it'll have more value. Correct. Correct. Yeah. We want we want people coming safely. And yeah. same thing is know how to check your ether scan. Know not to click on links that are sent to you. Not to interact with the hidden in your open sea stuff like this is very important to know and also important thing never be afraid to ask questions because when you you're not sure the best thing to do is ask those questions because that's what's going to save your butt um 
I've had a close call and and again save your butt never give your seed phrase away never store it in your phone stuff like this like nothing that can be backed up by your phone very important because your your emails can be hacked very easily as well so not scaring just informing so I, I was just curious on how you start doing your own research by like do you go to a website do you see if they have a discord like stuff like that I'm just curious um, if you if you're fairly new I, I, I'm kind of curious because this is I, I've been in it a little while so I'm just trying to find out different people's views on on where where people go how you do it um, I, I've learned through YouTube University although I still you know I do digging right Pretend yeah. you're an investigator. You want to know who who's in charge, like who the co-founders, where are the roadmaps, are they legit, right? Because you want to know they're going to be around a while, what kind of community they have, stuff like that. Yeah, that's a good question. And the thing of it is, too, it's changing every day. And I never really understood the extent of that until now. So you really kind of just got to be in the conversation of it. You got to be in the culture of it. And if if a person doesn't want to do that, they need to have somebody on their team that can help with that. So, like, I am so, 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 so busy. But I have Pete who keeps me up to date on stuff I need to research, stuff I need to know. And because you can't really navigate the space without kind of knowing it. Like, even if you have help, you still kind of got to know or, or you're not really in it. And so okay. that's what I've been. That's that's what I've so, been. So trust of. Pete, but don't forget to tip Pete because... His alpha and his knowledge is worth a lot of money, saving you from doing some wrong moves. I'm just saying. Oh yeah. So definitely, Pete definitely a... send them the love. Send yeah, them I know Pete in real or, life. Or whatever. Yeah. I'm just oh. Okay. I know. I know Pete have done. Give him a bag of weed. I don't know, but like just saying. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Um, I fuck with Pete in real life. Me and Pete are, are good. Good people. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Hey, uh, Nikki, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, do you have any plans for either the future or the near future to release some sort of NFT project of yourself, of your own? Yes, I do, actually. Um, I plan to, like, you know, like this not walls thing, I'm going to learn, like, while I see what they're doing and you know, I love seeing the way they're building their community and how they have these cute images and how people are connecting with them, the way they did their lunch and how they called it a baby shower. Like, I didn't know, like, all those things. So right now, I'm just learning. Um, but I do have a plan for a music project that I would love to do. And there's this organization, uh, this place here in Chicago that does gives mental, re- mental health resources to underserved communities. This place here in Chicago ran by this woman called Sister Afia. A Sister Afia, I believe it's pronounced. But I would love to be able to raise some money to help her. So I have a music NFT project that I'm currently working on. Me and Peter figuring out the logistics of how I'm going to do it. Because I'm a musician and a visual artist and a filmmaker. And I kind of want to incorporate all of it. So that's what I'm going to do. But I don't I don't want to shill it until I know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Did she just say Showcase. Show? <laughs> Showcase. Showcase. And Linda, any questions you have like about blockchain or whatever, like I'm super passionate about that stuff, so definitely hit me up and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Yeah, thank you. Cause like I it's all very confusing to me. It's like block it's like but I think like it became just like this nebula of information I don't know when I started wondering, damn, who who owns the blockchain? It's like, well, everyone. No one does, yeah. Yeah, that like how? (laughs) Metallic. (laughs) I don't get it. And then like mining for coin. Like when I get too deep off into it, I lose my sense of self. So I just, for now, I'm just gonna learn about non fungible tokens and work my way back from there. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to see what you come up with, and um, you know, definitely being involved in any any way I can to help you out. Um, you know, obviously with Pete, you know, being being on your team, I know um, you know, in some capacity in any way I can help out. I'm definitely excited about being part of that. Um, therapist, what's good? You got your hand up. Yeah, I wanted to just. I'm glad that, that Nikki's new to the NFT space. 
quick advice just to remember to get sleep i know that for a lot of a lot of people when they first get into the nft space it's a lot of learning so it's a lot of like long nights like thinking about the possibilities and learning and all that so i had to i wish i heard that a few times in the beginning um i've got to step out guys so thanks for for the space i'm really happy for everything all the growth um shout out to to rock lobster because i i got an arwell today and i also have the santa hat so i feel i feel like we're we're, we're there now we got that in common hey let's go <laughs> all right guys so have a good night take it easy man appreciate you popping in one. see you visual thank you or see you non-fungible thanks for popping in yeah so all right everybody so look it, it's kind of we're kind of hitting that two hour mark i, I kind of want to wrap up here i've had a long day i need to get some rest eventually you know especially since we're talking about mental health i i need some i need some time to relax and get my my face away from my phone so um i want to just wrap it up guys if we could all please get some final words in if you're in here as a speaker um if you're part of the narwhals team nikki definitely want to get some last words from you so um yeah let's let's go ahead guys whoever wants to pop in first Thank you for having us. It was so great talking with you guys about some passionate um, topics to all of us and things that relate to our lives daily. Um, if anyone ever needs anything, feel free to DM me any questions that you have. Um, same with anyone on our team. Our DMs are always open for you guys, so use us as a resource. Thank you. Yeah, this was fun. Please include me, invite me to future NFT talks. I learned from y'all experience. Like y'all been in this space for a long time. Um, y'all, you know, y'all people that have been in this for a while are the reason why the culture is the way it is. And it creates space for artists like me and opportunities for us. So I thank y'all and, you know, look forward to doing more stuff with the Nawals moving forward. Oh, thank you, Nikki. That means so much to us. And yeah, Mickey, you really hit it on the head there. I mean, we're just so happy with what we're doing here. Um, you know, I feel like we're just doing things uh, the right way and, and not, you know, marketing hype or, or uh, you know, trying to channel the energy of, of, of the DGENs in, in the space right now. And unfortunately, that's just the market condition we're in right now. You know, there's just more or less risk adverse people in the space right now so um you know we're just really really happy to be able to connect with you and um gosh your energy just has me ready to just go and like grind you know i'm, I'm just stoked uh, to hear your, your passion and, and uh it really is infectious so i really appreciate that and um, visual thank you for hosting the space so much and guys we hope that you love the narwhal art and the mission and the vibes that we're carefully cultivating here at the Narwhals. Uh, we do have a community building space every Friday where we just have conversations kind of like how we had at the, the tail end of this discussion here where we're just breaking down, you know, what it is to build a community and, and to navigate this space. And um, yeah, so we'll be having that this Friday. And um, other than that, um, just really appreciate your time. and visual thank you again for hosting this space and nikki it was it was so great to connect with you really and um yeah i'm just really looking forward to what the future um holds for us and everyone here in the narwhal community really appreciate all of your support uh patrick i see you down there repping the narwhal mummy patrick is a legend of the blessing um and yeah we're just really grateful for all of all of the people here in, in the in the um, space here, we really appreciate you guys listening in um, and, and listening to us talk about this topic that's a little tricky to, to talk about. But uh, yeah, really just really so thankful for each and every one of you. And I hope everyone has just the best night ever. I, I really do. I, I really do. Awesome. Good night, you guys. Good night, you guys. Visual and Nikki, this is my first time talking to you, but it was super great getting to know you and, you know, listening to your perspective. So excited uh -huh. to talk more in the future. Yeah, I look forward to future convos as well. I'm in it for the long haul. We're all going to make it. 
love it love it <laughs> love it yo that's amazing man hey this was a great great space i love you guys man truly appreciate the time the energy narwhals i'm looking forward to building with you guys please reach out to me if there's anything i can do to help you all further than this nikki it was great meeting you here through this space i'm um, looking forward to connecting with you further than this appreciate everybody in the space listening in and you know what this is this is ic web 3 i'm the host visual until next time peace blessings hundreds of lessons love that